This YouTube creator has managed to attract the public's wrath in a new, disturbing way. It's outright disgusting. For $3, you could see little Gannon's body. She was making money off of that little boy's autopsy photos. In an era where YouTube's mightiest have plummeted in public opinion after allegations of predatory behavior, Basically, two guys had come forward with stories on social media about how I had inappropriate contact with them. Racism. In these videos, I say some really disgusting, vile, nasty, and embarrassing things. And more have gone viral. If you've been watching me for a while, then you know that I have done a lot of things in my past that I hate. You'd think the internet had exposed every cancelable offense possible. A Canadian YouTuber with a controversial reputation uploaded a video claiming that his girlfriend had died in a car accident. Except that she didn't, and he admitted that he lied about the entire thing. Outrage is growing overnight about a video Logan Paul posted overnight. It apparently shows someone who took their own YouTube star Colleen Ballinger, who's better known as her online persona Miranda Sings, is facing significant backlash. She's been accused of having inappropriate relationships with some of her underage fans. But recently, in July 2023, one YouTuber's repulsive action has the true crime community in shock, proving that some wrongdoings can't be smoothed over with excuses. I chose to put the video on Patreon because of the sensitive nature of the evidence. When the well-being of others is sacrificed in the name of content. The word I use to describe it is evil, Brian. True crime. It's a genre that some folks just seem to gravitate towards. But what is it that calls millions to explore the brutal, grisly, and heartbreaking details behind some of the most inhuman acts in human history. Well, for certain fans of the content, it's the implication that these morbid events could occur to any person at any time that keeps them tuning in. It happened in a nice neighborhood, right when people were coming home from work. A young lady woke up and there's a guy standing in the doorway. Her final moments captured on a phone call with her mother. She just started saying, no, 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 no. and. It sounded like someone might have been grabbing her or something. Then, of course, there are always those outliers who defend or even admire the criminals themselves. 16-year-old Eva is obsessed with Richard Ramirez. She says she writes him every day and he writes back. I kind of like the way that they dress, which is kind of like weird, but I think that they had like a pretty cool like style. Incels from all over the internet showed their support for the atrocious acts he had committed and even called him a hero. But for many, it's not the perpetrators or the atrocities they commit that give this content its pull, but the victims of the injustices whose stories need to be told. And that's exactly the group of people that true crime YouTuber Zav Girl claimed her videos honored. I feel it is really important to give victims of these tragic crimes a voice when they don't have one, the creator stated in her about section. Yet, according to recent headlines, that very sentiment at the heart of Zav's channel had been thrown into question all thanks to one disturbing upload. But in a community known for not shying away from the gruesome, what had the YouTuber done to offend the unoffendable? Well, it all went back to one story that started as a simple missing persons case and ended up being so much more. Gannon has brown hair and brown eyes. He's 11 years old. He's 4'9 and weighs 90 pounds. And he was last seen wearing a blue jacket and jeans. My kid deserves to come home. There's still no sign of the missing boy who's been gone now for 10 days. Today, crime scene investigators were once again out of Gannon's home, though they're still staying tight-lipped about their investigation. It was January 2020 when 11-year-old Gannon Stoke was reported missing by his stepmother, Letitia Stoke. She claimed Gannon hadn't returned home after visiting his friends. News that cued a citywide search as over 200 volunteers combed the missing boy's hometown of Colorado Springs in hopes of finding him. But then Letitia's story changed multiple times. She told several different stories about what happened to her stepson. She alleged that a man had essayed her and then abducted Gannon. She then claimed a man had followed her from Petco to steal her stepson and she later alleged he had been taken by a stranger after he was injured in a bike accident. These inconsistencies, along with others, were all told to law enforcement within 48 hours. Weeks later, Letitia was arrested and charged with Gannon's passing, but it wasn't until March 2020 that the boy was found. 
the El Paso County Sheriff's Office here in Colorado says remains believed to be those of Gannon have been found in Pace near Pensacola, Florida. A far stretch from home, under a bridge in the Florida Panhandle, Gannon's remains had been stuffed into a suitcase that once belonged to the Stoke family. And with 18 wound marks, a firearm wound, and other damage, there was no question. The child's life hadn't simply ended, it had been taken. As for who was responsible, well, according to vital fluid found on Letitia's shoe, DNA found on her firearm, and a trip to Florida she took following her stepson's disappearance, all fingers were still pointing at the stepmother. And in April 2023, the case finally went to court. The trial of Letitia Stock started today, more than three years after Gannon was at his home in Colorado Springs. Here, prosecution argued Letitia had wanted to hurt Gannon's father, Al Stoke, one last time before she planned to leave him. And Al going out of town for work and leaving his son in her care presented the perfect opportunity to do just that. The defendant attacked him viciously, mercilessly, deliberately, and intentionally. But while the defense couldn't deny Letitia had committed the crime, that didn't necessarily mean she was responsible for her actions. Letitia Stelk has pleaded not guilty by reason of insanity. And as the media and the public followed along with the trial, so did Zav. In fact, the YouTuber made it her mission to keep her viewers updated on any and all developments, with 39 videos worth of content on the Letitia Stoke case, 23 of which are now hidden. In these videos, Zav provided her over 80,000 subscribers with updates. Sad news, guys. They found Gannon Stalk and actually in Florida. Analyzed court proceedings. Her demeanor's kind of odd. Her eyes just look like not, not normal. And she also seems so annoyed. Like she's got this attitude and it's just like, she's bothered by this whole thing. Like, oh, we inconvenienced your life. Sorry. And offered commentary on not just the victim. I can't even imagine what this boy went through. This is so crazy. But the accused at the center of the crime. Okay, guys, Letitia Stalk is at it again. She is different. There's something about her that's just, I don't know, it's just different than some of the other ones. I mean, she's just crazy. She's just messed up. That's horrible. She's just horrible. I just can't believe she did that. So we have a firearm, we have a blunt instrument, and we have a or sharp instrument. What the heck? This girl is crazy. And there was just one title that Zav and fellow members of the true crime community seemed to find fitting for a stepmother that could exhibit this level of cruelty. Next thing I want to talk about is Letitia Stalk, our favorite monster. This monster wasn't just created overnight. I'm sorry. What do you make of all these new charges with the firearm and the blunt instrument? And then, I mean, what do you think of all that? breaks my heart. heart to know what kind of that that boy went through makes me want to have five minutes with this monster and that's what she is a monster oh she is she really is a monster that's what zav saw leticia as and with that characterization came an equally scathing moral implication i swear i i feel like this lady is evil and she is Wow. But while Zav may have positioned herself on the righteous side of the internet as she outwardly condemned Letitia's actions, nobody's gonna feel bad for you. Imagine what Gannon was feeling uh, going through that traumatic experience. I mean, that awful experience that you, he had to go through. Imagine what he was feeling. And express sympathy towards Gannon's parents. Just amazing parents, you know? They're both very well-spoken and just very like, you could tell like very loving. The YouTuber's treatment of the case hardly seemed to take the feelings of those affected by Gannon's passing into account. See, as Zav went through a leaked police affidavit, there were small traces of found in the depressions of the drywall and paint texture that Letitia failed to remove when she cleaned the scene. Investigated Letitia's ex-husband's obituary for clues, Uncle Horace Mitchell II and Teresa Oxidine of Panama City Beach, Florida. So Panama City, Florida is about two hours away from Pace, Florida. And Pace, Florida is where they found Gannon. So that's one connection that she has to Florida. And even interviewed one of Letitia's former high school classmates. Obviously, she's not a good person. Mm -hmm. She's never has been a good person. This is all my opinions and my mm -hmm. experiences. But um, the saddest part about watching the trial was her personality's the same. I, I don't see any grief. I see the same classmate I had. 
the YouTuber's curiosity seemed to verge on the obsessive. What do you guys think happens when she takes him in the car? Like, do you think she does anything to him? And despite the trial coming to a verdict that many saw as the best possible conclusion for the horrific crime. The verdict is in. A jury finds Letitia Stauk here guilty of her 11-year-old stepson. Your conduct in this case deserves the maximum punishment that I can impose under Colorado law. She's going to spend the rest of her life in prison without the possibility of parole. Now family, friends, and the community that tirelessly searched for him can begin healing. The relief of Gannon's loved ones seemed to be the last thing on Zab's mind. No, it seemed the YouTuber was otherwise preoccupied exercising one of her rights. Freedom of information. It's the act that provides members of the public with access to federal records upon request. And by July 2023, it was thanks to this right that previously unreleased details on the Letitia Stoke case were in Zav's hands, including images that were deemed too graphic to show publicly during the trial. We're looking at his back, and there's a sharp force injury on the left upper back. That's right. Zav had accessed Gannon's autopsy photos, but it's what she chose to do with these images that nobody saw coming. See, Zav didn't simply keep the graphic content to herself or explain what the autopsy contained. She created a Patreon video, offering access to the photos for $3. Understandably, this didn't go over well on the internet. Now, this is just disgusting. To take a child's autopsy photos, a minor, an 11-year-old, and to charge people $3 so that they can view it as if it's a circus? She says she's a voice for the voiceless. Or if that were true, you wouldn't have done what you did. You are a normal, regular civilian. Act like it. And on July 11th, 2023, Zav responded to the backlash, but not with an apology. No, in a since-deleted community post, the YouTuber was quick to excuse her actions, writing, the reality of the situation is that different people feel differently about this. Some people genuinely think making a video including the autopsy photos is bad, and I respect their opinion and feeling. Other people, like myself, think of autopsy photos and the coroner discussing explaining them as interesting and informative, and are able to view it all in a more scientific, detached way. It's just one of those things where it depends on the person. Zav went on to say the fee wasn't about the images, but a reflection of the effort and time she had put into the video. Still, she maintained she wasn't opposed to removing the upload. Yet, in the end, it wasn't Zav who took action, but Patreon, as the platform removed not only the video, but the creator's entire account for violating community guidelines. Then came July 13th, when Zav uploaded a video addressing the situation, and unlike her previous post, this time, it appeared the YouTuber was prepared to take accountability. The upload was titled, My Apology to Ganon's Family and Everyone I Hurt, and five seconds into the three minute video, an apology is exactly what Zav delivered. I want to apologize to everyone I've hurt, but especially Gannon's family. Still, while Zav claimed she'd done the inner work to see how her actions had been wrong, I've been doing some major soul searching and reflecting. She believed there was some crucial information the online crusade against her hadn't considered. There are many trying to define my motivations, and while I'm not looking for forgiveness, or trying to make excuses. I do hope to provide additional context that has not been made clear. See, during the trial of Letitia Stowe, the YouTuber admitted she made an official records request, but never specifically for autopsy photos. I requested all the video, audio, and written records. I made no request for autopsy photos. I wanted all trial records, but my main interests were interviews with Letitia. The autopsy photos just happened to be in the files. So why had Zav chosen to share images she hadn't sought out? Well, according to her, she wasn't showing anything that hadn't already been shown before. I believe many of my images were already shown during the televised trial, and I saw the photos on other public YouTube channels that live streamed the trial and shared the evidence. I didn't think any of the images were new. These photos were already public, although the video I put together with the coroner's voice was my own creation. As for the $3 admission to see the content, Zav no longer claimed this reflected the work she put into the video, but that the price was merely a protective measure. Putting the evidence behind a paywall meant added security, and I naively thought they wouldn't be made public. In fact, uploading the video to Patreon meant Zav had taken a cut in her potential earnings. I chose not to put the photos on YouTube, a public forum, where the views would have allowed me to make more money and the photos would be seen by more people. 
However, putting the video behind a paywall meant the YouTuber had no control over the rumors that developed, including that she hadn't blurred the images, that she'd shown genitalia, and that she'd cracked jokes about the content. I don't even cuss on my channel, and I would never allow derogatory remarks about a victim. I realized my intentions were not communicated well. My channel style is sort of me hanging out with friends and speaking off the cuff, and I did not articulate my reasons or think my decision through. Zav promised that although others might share the photos, she would never make that mistake again. In the meantime, she told viewers that she would be looking into sensitivity training. But despite Zav's best efforts to gain back the support of her audience, To those who have supported me and followed my channel, and to the true crime community, I'm sorry I let you down. The video's like to dislike ratio and the comment section offered one resounding response, apology not accepted. To viewers, Zav's Patreon post exposed a cold disregard for Ganon that was not unlike the way he was treated by his former stepmother. As one user commented, Letitia took Ganon's life and you took his dignity. And another viewer wrote, how can you not understand displaying a harmed 11 year old boy is morally wrong? You have lost your way big time. When you lose your humanity and empathy for a child, when you cannot see a deceased child's right to dignity. Time to step back and find those feelings. It is those feelings that differentiate us from the likes of Letitia. The fact that you have to have it pointed out to you is appalling. According to viewers, Zav's lack of discretion wasn't just unfeeling. This kind of content had serious consequences. The man who was being investigated for confessing to Jean Benet's passing had photos of her autopsy on his computer that he used for CP. This is why you don't put this stuff online. And now it's too late, because online is forever. You've just re-victimized Ganon's loved ones. Apology is too little too late. The YouTuber's audience couldn't seem to grasp how Zav could post those images to Patreon, let alone how subscribers could rationalize paying $3 to see a child's autopsy. As one viewer commented, I can't believe anyone in their right mind would want to view his autopsy photos and pay money for it. I feel so sorry for Ganon's family. And another wrote, Putting a child's autopsy photos on Patreon for money is the most 2023 thing I've ever heard. Others questioned how genuine Zav's apology could be, as the upload seemed to contain more justification than accountability, the YouTuber still had her merch plastered all over her video description, and there even appeared to be an eye roll amidst Zab's apologizing. I am so very sorry. All telltale signs to viewers that the YouTuber's heart wasn't in the I'm sorry. But according to Zav, the fact that her apology sounded rehearsed was proof enough that she believed in what she was saying. As she commented, It was a written statement I wrote that I chose to read instead of just writing it. So wait, if someone writes something from the heart, how is that any different? I thought this deserved a thought-out written statement. I wanted to put time into it and write it that way. I made sure I said everything I wanted to. Zap also denied the allegation made in the comments section that she monetized her video by posting a screenshot of the turned off monetization setting and commenting, It's not monetized, that is a lie. Sometimes YouTube puts ads on unmonetized videos. Trust me, I don't like that, but they do. This video is not monetized. But even Zav knew it wasn't just viewers that had been affected by her release of those photos. To Ganon's family, I have no words that can make this better. No one should have to ever go through what you guys have been through. I am so very sorry for any pain that I have caused you. See, in an interview with News Nation's Brian Enton on Dan Abrams Live, Gannon's father, Al Stoke, had revealed how Zab's actions had opened up recent wounds. It is re-traumatizing. We just finished the trial just over two months ago, Brian, and, and now we're having to kind of relive some of this stuff and, and not being able to put it behind us. And the still grieving father had only one word to describe the YouTuber's choice to monetize the images. The word I use to describe it is evil, Brian. In an ironic twist, Zav was now listed in the same category of reprehensible she'd previously placed Letitia in. I swear, I, I feel like this lady is evil and she is, wow. And while Zav fought this insinuation, My anger over what happened again and is the reason I started following the case. I'm not this evil, heartless person like many are saying. Gannon's father couldn't seem to find another motivation for Zab's actions. The world got enough information from the trial to have every discussion they want to have. Why do we need to go have a freedom of information request and then dishonor my son by putting these photos out there like that? Al had done everything he could to never see these photos of his son. In fact, the only day he hadn't attended the trial was the day Gannon's autopsy photos were going to be shown. But despite the court's efforts not to include these images in the live stream of the trial and only show them to the jury, they were now floating around online. Now I feel like I can't even go on YouTube 
without the possibility of accidentally coming across these photos. According to Al, he'd even considered taking legal action against Sav, but after the trial of his ex-wife, he was too emotionally and financially drained to pull that off. There is a lot of good that comes out of release of information. It's just in this instance, someone has taken that and turned it into evil. And Al wasn't the only one condemning Zab's actions. Brian Enton addressed the disconnect between the YouTuber's coverage of the case and the actual nightmare Gannon's family lived through. This isn't some video game or TV show you're playing on your computer. You know, th this is a real family's life. And the lead prosecutor on the case, Michael Allen, even suggested an alternative way Zav could have examined the autopsy from a scientific perspective without ever showing those photos. They could have used body diagrams that the autopsy also included. Instead of putting the actual pictures of Gannon's just completely broken body. Still, Gannon's family has seen the worst in the world and managed to carry on. It would have been so easy to lay down and, and just let this overtake us, but we're still here and still going. And in part, this is thanks to members of the public who offered their support to the family rather than their scrutiny. I don't really want to focus on what we've been through, but just our gratitude and appreciation. I can't express enough the thanks for what the good people in the community have done throughout this past year. In fact, it's this kindness from strangers that still allows Gannon's father to see the good in those who followed the case, despite those who overstep. The majority of people I've come in contact with uh, throughout this pa past three plus years have been absolutely sustained me. And I think those people will uh, will continue to shape the narrative that this is unacceptable behavior by a very small portion of people. The nightmare the Stoke family lived through was broadcast to the world. Three years later, the family burst into tears, hearing the verdict guilty on all charges. And that was enough to give the internet license to analyze, dissect, and discuss the case in an open forum. All uh, the cases that I've um made videos of i feel like she is the worst i feel like there's something about her that's just i mean they're She's all evil. monsters but something about her is just wow another level or something it's just wow but there's a clear difference between content that acknowledges the real people affected by Gannon's passing and content that neglects this reality. There's a true crime community and 99% of them have good intentions and are really focused on the victims, but there's just those bad apples out there that are trying to make money. And unfortunately, Zav's choice to upload those images to Patreon failed to consider how this would hurt those who were still grieving. It is re-traumatizing. So while the YouTuber has attempted to atone for her actions, I did not want to add to the family's loss with anything I said or shared about this case. It will be a long time before I ever trust myself or my decisions again. Sometimes I'm sorry isn't enough. This is the story of Zav Girl, the YouTuber who monetized the pain of one of the very victims she claimed to provide a voice for.